Things You Missed in Bloodborne exists to tell you the things you need to know about a stage or a boss or the story, nothing more than what's essential. I mean, if this was an unedited walkthrough, I would have to show you how I got stuck in between these cabinets and couldn't get out for 20 minutes. Let's not do that. That wasn't funny. I had to kill myself and I lost all my blood echoes. That's number one, by the way. Don't walk in between the cabinets. But let's start, as we all must, at the beginning. After you've created your unspeakable abomination in the character creator, you don't actually have to kill the werewolf in the next room or die to it. It only drops two blood vials. The best thing to do is actually just to run past it and try and get to the first messenger lantern. This way, you spend less time warping between areas and less time looking at that bloodborne loading screen. If you return to the clinic after entering the Hunter's Dream, you can talk to Yosefka, who's locked herself in the room where you spawned. Uh, before release, many thought that the man who gave us the blood transfusion was Yosefka, but actually, it's this kind woman caring for the afflicted. If you find anyone else in the world who needs a safe place to stay, then later in the game you should keep this place in mind. As you make your way through the world, you're likely to encounter this executioner, and instead of encounter, I suppose I mean die to, because he's brutally difficult for a new player. The best strategy is to shoot your gun as soon as you see him start an attack animation. That's how fast his attacks are. More often than not, you'll knock him onto his knees if you follow this strategy. But the weird thing about this guy is that he's one of the few enemies that drops something other than blood vials or bullets. About 50% of the time, he'll drop a tempering blood gemstone. After you get the right workshop tool, you can put three of these gemstones onto your weapon, and they buff your weapon in different ways. I believe this one makes your physical attack rise, and if you find a particularly rare tempering gemstone, then it increases the damage you do when your health is full as well. You can see the rarity of the stone here, so it's worth farming this executioner to get a good gemstone. Next, I need to tell you about the fastest possible way to unlock the shortcut in Central Yharnam. Unlocking this shortcut is essential if you want a quick run to the first boss. We're aiming to unlock this gate to the left of the lantern. So you start off running past the hunt. They won't follow you if you run fast enough. And then as soon as you lose them, hug the left wall. You'll see a bunch of wooden coffins here, and a couple of them are hiding a gap in the fence. Jump down here to the dog cage area, and instead of going forward to the sewers, go back. You're looking for a door at this point. You want to go through it, and then you're in the dark house. When you're in the dark house, you go through the opposite door, and continue up to unlock the shortcut. This lets you bypass pretty much the entire level, and from start to finish, you can get to unlocking the shortcut in less than a minute. That said, you should probably do the level normally. There's some great items in here, and you do actually want to get good at the game, don't you? In particular, one item you need is the torch that the Brick Troll is guarding. To take him out, you just tie him a gunshot just before he strikes you. His attacks are really slow if you keep your distance. Uh, if you stand too close to him, his attacks are really fast, so back up and shoot him when he's about to hit you. When you walk past him at first, it looks like he doesn't notice you, but don't be fooled. If you ignore him, he'll come up behind you and ambush you while you're fighting the next group of enemies. Don't ask how I found that one out. The next choke point for a lot of people is going to be fighting these two werewolves. If you're having trouble with it, don't worry, I've got some cheese for you. Simply run past them, then take the first stairs you see on the left. Be careful of this guy, then enter the dark house, kill the two enemies on the top floor, then turn around and see the two werewolves stuck in this door. It's very easy to poke them with an extended weapon here until they're dead, and then you can explore the bridge at your leisure. Alternatively, Molotov cocktails are a good way to take them out if you don't like the cheese. Before you fight the werewolves, there is an entrance to the sewers off to the left side of the bridge, uh, through all of this debris. In my opinion, it's the easiest and best way down to the sewers, especially because it leads you to the hunter's attire. This set is undoubtedly better than the one you start with, so it's a good way to start your journey into the sewers. And when you make this large drop down to the legless townspeople, you should immediately look for a ladder and head up. Eventually you'll come up behind the house that had music coming from it, some of you might remember that, and you can talk to this young Yarnum girl in the lit window. The music box she gives you will help you with a boss fight later on, and also, you guys should prepare to cry. It's kinda sad. 
If you continue down in the sewers, you'll eventually spot Epic Namebro at the end of this tunnel. He'll scream at you, but this gives you a chance to get behind him without being charged and one-shot in the tunnel. So get behind the pig, and you will have time to charge up R2 and initiate a critical. It does a lot of damage, but fuck, was that really worth it? Turns out, yeah, it's worth it. After that traumatizing vision, you should go behind the pig to loot the Saw Hunter's badge, which lets you buy all the starting weapons from the messengers in the bath. Up the ladders from the pig, you'll arrive at another bridge. Across the bridge is a second boss. Near here is an elevator. Uh, you're gonna want to activate it so you can have a fast run back to this boss because, oh boy, you guys are gonna be running to this boss a lot. The second boss is not easy. Going back, do you remember the caged dogs we dropped down to when we were doing the shortcut? This leads to the second entrance of the sewers. Along this path, there's this old lady hiding from the beasts. She's looking for a safe place to stay, so store that information away for later when you find her a safe haven. Further on, there's a hidden entrance to the rafters to the right here. Cut down these two hanging corpses. The one on the left has the saw spear weapon, uh, which is an alternate version of the saw cleaver, and the one on the right has a bunch of bloodstone shards. And that's pretty much it for the interesting things in central Yharnam. I missed out on a few consumables, but I want to leave the rest for you guys to explore. I can't wait to hear how you're all going with the game, so let me know. It's so much fun, isn't it? The combat is so fast, the regain system works so well, the bosses are so creative. I've actually spent more time making videos than playing at this point, so I think I'm gonna go and play some more now. If you need help with the first two bosses, I'll have episodes out on them soon. You might be wondering about my plan for Bloodborne in regards to guides, and it depends on your feedback. I'm gonna see how I go, but right now I think I'm going to be doing things you missed for areas, because learning about things you missed in an area makes more sense than going through every little bit of the area, and for bosses I'm going to be putting out short boss guides that give you the most important ways to beat them. So let me know what you think of that, let me know what you think of this video, leave a like if you learned something new, and if there's anything you think I missed, I've actually left a link in the description for the Fextra Life wiki for this area. If you go there, you can edit the page and add your own tips for Central Yharnam. This is a pretty good idea for these videos, right? It means we can all contribute to the community knowledge, and if I do miss something, which I will, you guys can add it yourself and help everybody out. I'm hoping this will make the resources around the game even better. If you need help with the two bosses, then check out the dream guides to come on my channel, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.